Hi guys, so today we're going to take the Fusion 15 earth texture model that we created in the other project and we're going to up that quite a bit using a lot better images of the earth. So I'm going to show you where to find those and I'm going to show you how those get applied. We're also going to create a cloud system on the earth that is dynamic and that can be controlled by you and I'm going to show you how to set that up in a rig and that's pretty easy to do and so you're going to get some super great results like this so please stay Stay tuned guys. Okay, so I'm going to build a better earth model and I want to use 4K textures instead of these low quality textures that are in place here. And this is a nice simulation of earth, but you can see that the, the actual texture itself is a little bit too low quality to do much with it. So I'm going to make a much better setup here, but I'm going to use Blackmagic's Fusion 9 to do that. So first I'm going to copy paste everything from the flow uh, minus the, the media out. I don't want to copy that one. So let's get rid of a couple of these items. You can see I got rid of the fog and I cleaned up some of the nodes that I don't want to use. But basically everything else is from the example from the Build the Earth model tutorial that I have out there. So let's go ahead and copy paste all of these flow nodes here. And we're going to open Fusion 9. And let's go ahead and paste this into the flow area of Fusion 9. And it's going to give me an error. Some of the media in and media out points are not going to be working here in Fusion 9. Uh, Fusion 9 uses different loaders. So we'll go ahead and break these connections. And this one is my texture. So I'll need to break that one and reload it. I'll delete it. And this one is the background. Okay, obviously we need some new textures to get that higher resolution for the earth. So we can find those at the Visible Earth Project for NASA. So I'll give you the link in the description of the video, but we wanna to go to the Visible Earth and go down to page three. Yeah, so explore in there and pull off the images that you want to make your own textures. But I'm going to pull off this blue marble land surface, shallow water, and shaded topography. And there's some different options here. We have a 2K, and this is a this is really a, I would call this more of a 4K. And there is a higher resolution option out there. If you want to follow my tutorial and my texture, download this Land Shallow Topo. It's 8192 by basically 4K. So that's the one I'm going to use. And then that's a TIFF image. And then I also took this Blue Marble Clouds image. And I just took the 2K image there, the JPEG. So I'm going to grab this, uh, this shallow land top. And this is a... 8192 by 4K, and that's gonna be my texture that I use for my Earth planet. And I'm also going to take this cloud combine file, and so that's gonna make something that we can animate and do some neat things with the clouds. And I'll go ahead and grab my star field as well. So let's bring the star field over into the image plane. We wanna go out from here into the image plane. And let's take, we're gonna move this down here we will put our texture on top of the earth there you can take a look at that as you can see already the texture for the earth is looking much better than the original texture that we had in the davinci resolve example so let me move all of these locations i'm going to just center these to zero and i'm going to make this one about 60 on my scale and then let's center everything to fit so we'll take a look at that and so I have everything coming into my merge and so that's looking pretty good I think I need to move this uh, image plane back a little bit okay that's starting to look pretty good okay so now I want to build uh, my clouds on top of the earth so I have a pretty nice image right now I'm going to go ahead and rotate the planet just a little bit. I'm going to want to look at a specific area, so I want to rotate this down. Kind of looking at the top edge of the Earth itself. So I want to see a little bit of the edge of Africa and some of 
North and South America. So that's pretty good right there. And I put in this black background and I brought it into the specular color here. And that's just going to make the reflection basically go away. And I might do, do a future tutorial where I make the, the actual oceans reflect. But in this case, I'm just going to turn off the, the lighting effects on the earth itself and make it kind of a flat appearance for now. So I want to check some settings here on the background. Affected by lights is turned off. We want to make sure that that background does not have a reflection. If we turn this on, we're going to get that background reflection. We don't want to have that. We just want that background of the star field to be flat as well. And so now the, the actual clouds, what I want to do, I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to select this shape and I'm going to copy it or control C and I'm going to paste it as an instance. Let's get all these lined up here. So this is going to be an instance now of this shape. And I want to do that because when I put my clouds on here, one of my examples that I show when the earth rotates, the clouds are going to rotate with it. And I'm going to do that through instancing. So I'm going to go ahead and this is just the shape. I'm going to need another cook torrents. And if I bring in these clouds right now, I'll go ahead and connect the clouds to the color diffuse to the instance shape 3D. And we need to make sure this is set on sphere, uh, which it is because I instance it. And I want to bring this into the merge 3D. And you can see it just put the clouds kind of over top of the earth and the earth kind of disappears. So we have to do another step. And so what I want to do, I want to put a bitmap in here. Okay. And so I have my bitmap. And so what I need to do is connect this bitmap in between the cloud image and the cook torrents. And so I'm going to need one more item to do that. So let me grab this cloud image into the bitmap. And then let's bring down a merge. And so we want to go out of the bitmap into, we don't want to go into the effect mask. We want to take it actually into the background of this merge and then out of the merge into the cook torrents. So now you can see we're starting to delete out the black. And if we take a look at that now, we'll take a look at our merge 3D. We can see our earth starting to show through underneath the, the clouds itself. So that's really the effect that we want to get. We can go back into the bitmap and we can make some adjustments can adjust the kind of the range of these clouds and what I like to do as well here I like to put one more thing in here just to give us a little bit more control over the actual outcome and so I'm going to break this connection with the bitmap and I want to go in here and put in a brightness okay and go ahead and connect that right back into the bitmap and so our settings on the bright brightness we can bring down you can see this as I bring down or bump up the brightness levels then we can get some nice changes to the clouds as well but I want to get a little bit of transparency on some of these clouds I don't want them to be um, super just a, a high contrast where it's either on or off I want to get that contrast down a bit so we can see through some of these clouds so we can make adjustments to get the effect that we're looking for. And so that looks pretty good. And so now, so if I go on to the original shape 3D and I change the rotation, you can see that the clouds go with it. So that's one of the effects that I showed you in the preview. We can get that nice change there. Let's go to the render here. And so let me do that again. So you can see we're getting that nice, the clouds moving with the actual earth. One more thing I want to show you. So really the clouds are just kind of traveling along with the earth. And so that's, that's one look. But if we want to have dynamic clouds, we need to set this up a little bit differently. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do is put another shape 3D in here. Let me break this one. And so this one is not going to be tied to the original shape. So if I take break this connection and I break my cook torrents and bring it into my this new shape into the material setting, 
and then I go out into the merge. Make sure it's on. I see I have it on a plane now. You can see I need to change the setting to sphere and our clouds come back. And so we've got a little bit of a problem. And so what we need to do is go to the scale. I'm going to bump that up a little bit to 1.01. .01. And so now our clouds are sitting up on top of the earth just ever so slightly, but we can see them now. Actually, I'm going to go to 1.02. So now when I change my rotation of the earth, uh, if I go to the shape again, I can move the cloud. So it kind of look like it, you can make that be a time lapse. You can make the clouds move independently from the earth. So you could rotate those separately because the clouds are going to move a little bit faster than the earth. So you get that, that nice movement there. And you saw that in my preview at the beginning of the video. One more thing I want to show you. So we can now, this cloud system, so I'm going to go ahead and move these back a little bit and I'm going to bring in a tool called the vortex and we don't want the particle vortex. We just want this VTX tool and I had that brightness selected. So it just brought it in nicely in between there. This is my zone of influence. Uh, you can see size of the vortex You can see angle and you can see power. So if this is set on zero, there's no angle and there's no effect, even though this has a power and this has a size. So if I bump this size up, there's still no effect because I have to have an angle. And so now we can start rotating everything within the zone of this center size. So we make it smaller so you can see that outline. So that's the whole earth, or I can bring it in a lot smaller and just affect a specific area. See that? And so I can make those clouds kind of move the way I want them. You can see this line here will be your angle. So anything at zero is going to be flat, no influence. You can go positive or negative based on the rotation you want. So like a hurricane is going to be counterclockwise. It's going to be that direction in the northern hemisphere. And then southern hemisphere would be the opposite. So you need to go down this way. Okay, so really now we can just go into the fun of animating the clouds. And so I have my, basically my rendered image up in the right pane. And I have this uh, bitmap image on the left pane. And I've selected my vortex settings here up in the inspector panel. So let's go back now to zero. And I want to start with the X and Y. I want to animate those. So they've turned green, so I'm animating them. And so I want to start there. I'm going to go to about 140. And I'm going to move this point up to right about there. And then I want to go to about 225. And move this point up the coast here. I'm going to select all those points. And I'm going to hit Shift S just to kind of smooth out the curve there so it's not such an angle there. So now you can see the animation of the cloud system. So that gives us a really dynamic look at um, being able to manipulate our clouds in the way we want it. Uh, this system's set up really nicely and we can animate anything in the scene. We can animate the clouds and we can animate the earth. This is a nice high texture earth, so we can get some really great views that are very realistic for any scene. So hopefully this tutorial has helped you guys out a little bit. And please subscribe to the channel. That really helped me out a little bit. So thanks for watching and take care, guys.